Hi there everyone, thank you for coming back to NG and Trading. This is part 2 of the tutorial on freestockcharts.com. Now we are going to discuss about growing tools. So these are the different topics that we will be discussing. Importance of the drawing tools, the visibility modes, the crosshair with data box, crosshair without data box, and then panning, eraser, trend line, text, Fibonacci retracement, vertical line, ellipse, rectang rectangle, arrow, or other drawing tools. Alright, so let's continue. Importance of the drawing tools. Drawing tools help us identify trend, identify patterns, trace volatility contraction or prices, and it helps us identify breakout and breakdown points, identify support and resistance, and it helps us indicate price, volume, and indicator levels. So, supposing we have here an MOMO stock. Okay. I'll delete this one for the time being and uh, I'm going to ask you how do we t determine what is the trend line of this particular stock. First, let's try to use this horizontal line. As you can see, at this level the price is getting knocked down most of the time and here on this level every knockdown and it goes uh, and the price goes down it is be being supported by this particular support line so the price is actually oscillating from one channel to the other this is our upper channel and this is our lower channel our lower channel is what we call support line and the upper channel is what we call resistance line there is no trend on this particular price action because the price is just bouncing back and forth back and forth okay. it's just going sideways that's why they call this one range or sideways action now how about on this side here do we have a trend? Yes. yes. If you look at here, we have a breakout. This price action had gone away from this resistance line. And that is what we call a breakout. What is an example of a breakdown? It's the opposite of breakout this one this price action here had broken down away from this support line but this is what we call a breakdown but it was able to regain back up and eventually able to break out of the former higher high the other breakout is actually this point here to break out this is one this one is a breakout of this higher high now what do we have a trend now on this right side if I'm going to use this trend line and connect my higher highs left click create a parallel line drop that one 
to my higher lows. Okay, we have here higher high. And we have here higher lows. Our low is going higher and higher, and our high is getting higher and higher. And now we have an uptrend. Okay, so all these drawing tools helps us identify the the trend line or the the trend of the stock. Now, how about tracing the volatility contraction? What is volatility contraction? Okay, for example. We have a situation like this. Let's erase this. Race, race, race. I'll use again the trend line and I'm going to connect all this high that's going down and all this low that's going up so now I have a pennant pattern so I'm able to determine a pennant but at the same time this is what we call a volatility contraction the price is actually moving towards the center while the the price is getting smaller and smaller or the width of the price is getting smaller and smaller and as you can see each day as we move is getting towards the center okay that's a breakdown but look we have a breakup want to start putting a trade here maybe not maybe yes you can put a trade right on the very top of this but most of the time if we have a breakout like this you will have a so-called pullback right at the mid body of this breakout candle see if you look at the breakout candle it is accompanied with a heavy volume so I will use this crosshair with data box look at it I have 6.5 million volume against the usual volume of 2.2 and 1.8 million that's actually a big volume but wait for a pullback might be the mid body it's not a pullback but if you look at the next move we have actually a long wick it means there is a selling pressure that is coming from the top so this price is going to go down and indeed it's going down and look at that now this price has gone to the level at the mid body of this breakout candle you can position a buyer right at this stage if you look at here the last is 2360 at the close of the day if you're able to place your trade you could probably make it right up to 26 dollars right away that's a three dollars move in one day 
then next day there is again a pullback another pullback and this last pullback is actually reverting back to the very base of the breakout candle so there are two pullbacks mid body and the base of this breakout candle continue and it's rising there you go it went back to $26 $26.40 so you, you can enter right here or you can enter on this that's the beauty of all these drawing tools it helps us identify the pattern it helps us identify the breakout and helps us to identify the trend this, this particular stock is actually going up and it's accompanied by volume and it helps us also point out the level of the price as well as the volume okay and that's all about the importance of the drawing tools there are three visibility mode for the drawing tools by clicking and reclicking the drawing icon you will cycle through the different visibility mode of the drawing tools one the icon with names is this part here and icon only and then you have the drop down only now let's take a look at that one on the actual uh, chart okay so this is the drawing icon if I click this it removes the drop down or it removes the, the icons and I only have this drop down and if I click this one again it gives me the icon and the description now this is very useful um, especially when you are new with the uh, drawing tools that way it's so easy for you to identify when I started I used to have this displayed but right now since uh, I knew most of them already so uh, I just uh, use this icon only then that way I can uh, give more space for my chart and uh, so that I'll have more area just for the chart but if you're brand new it's always good to have the description okay cross hair with data box identifying volume and price points by clicking the drawing tool cross hair with data box it defaults every click of the mouse to any candles to have a data box shown the box will show the open high low last of a candle as well as the volume and if there are other indicators it will show also the value of those indicators so as you can see here our number one is the crosshair with data box which is actually shown as click because this is uh, highlighted number two a candlestick is clicked right here this green candle the left mouse button is clicked and held number three data box pop-up with values about the candlestick being clicked once the left mouse button is released the pop-up box disappears okay and just a little review of what's high last low and open and with a bullish candle and a bearish candle the green candle represents the bullish candle the bearish candle or the red candle represents the bearish candle now for the green candle the open starts right at the bottom and then it it goes low which is lower than the open sometimes the low can be the same as the open 
and it goes high and then maybe at the last minute or last second um, it might drop down a little bit from the high or sometimes also you'll have the high the same as the last the last is the last price of win when the particular candle closed as opposed to the bullish candle the bearish candle opens from the top and then it might go high drops down to the very low and then might uh, go back up at a certain level which is higher than the low sometimes low and last also may be the same okay so let us try to take a look at that with the actual chart an actual candle okay. let's try to zoom in I am scrolling the mouse forward okay so that way I'll be able to zoom in the price now for example if I'm going to click this candle this okay, let me delete this uh, ellipse here then I'll click the crosshair with data box. Left click the mouse, hold the mouse, and then as you can see, there is a pop up box, right? Look at that, there's a pop up box. October 4, 2016, the open is 2220, the high is 2468, the low is 2220, last is 2448. Okay, and that is totally different when you view also with the bearish candle here the bearish candle opens up with 2580 from the top the high is 2601 low is 2443 the last 2482 so basically it went down as low as 2443 but it was able to go back up around 40 cents uh, back up okay and it tells you also what volume the volume is 4.1 million okay. we go back to this example here the volume is 6.5 million this is really a good volume compared to the previous volume of 1.8 1.9 so it means um, there is a, a strong okay buy signal on this one there are buyers the buyers are actually moving in right and that's about crosshair with data box all right so we have here crosshair with data box but this time we are combining a certain uh, indicator which is called relative strength index indicator now this particular indicator would actually tell you whether a particular stock still has the strength to be able to continue to move up or it had been overbought or, or under or uh, oversold when it's very low like uh, less than 50 it's really uh, oversold and uh, if it's like 70 and upward is overbought but usually a stock that is showing 70 and upward still has actually the great momentum to be able to continue upward and just like the previous uh, example that we have in this case we have number one the crosshair is actually selected because it is uh, highlighted number two candlestick is being clicked this this where the arrow is uh, the green arrow okay and then number three the data box popped up which give you the uh, open high low and the last price as well as the volume and the RSI now let's try to see an actual example okay I have here a chart of MOMO now 
I know that I'm going to be telling you later on about uh, uh, the rest of the other indicators but this is just an example I'm adding one indicator together with the volume and uh, how did I do that it's very simple let me remove that one first I click the volume okay drop down and then add indicator and then just scroll it down look for RSI I don't need the moving average here so I will remove that and then R I don't need the RS RSI 50 so I'm going to click our the drop down of RSI 50 and then edit change that one to 14 just maintain the color okay now I have RSI 14 so like I said RSI 14 70 and higher it means the stock still has the strength to be able to move upward so uh, usually it indicates that the uh, uh, overbought but an overbought stocks would actually tell you that many buyers are actually loving it okay that's what it tells you so let's see uh, I'm going to click the crosshair okay so it's highlighted right now I'm going to zoom in so let's try to examine this I'll put a line here this is the first breakout of the VCP volatility uh, contraction first breakout with a big volume okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that one hold the left mouse button now it's telling me the RSI is 54 okay continue holding the mouse button okay let me uh, let me zoom that one in continue holding the mouse button move upward the RSI is increasing it means there is a growing interest now I have 70 7, 64 71 <clears throat> at this point in time people are interested now in buying okay slowly slowly and boom I got 73 and it's going upward went to 80 82 and it moves upward goes up to 92 okay now 92 that's already a signal for you that something is this is getting very high and anything that's going up will always come down and it is from there onward you have 92 went down to 90 back to 93 and look at that went to 72 70 is still very strong RSI okay but uh, it, as you can see we have a red candle and a huge red candle with a big volume but a strong RSI that's why if you come to think about it the next day we have a huge counter from the bulls we have a 73 RSI and a huge volume and a huge spike as well although it wasn't able to break out the high of that particular previous can red candle I'll move it again so let's see I'll continue holding the left mouse button and then just move from one candle to the other look at that it's really going down now we're talking about 43 uh, okay it's, it's really low okay now it's back to 60 50 uh, so it means it, it's going it's increasing again boom 60 it maintained 60 wasn't able to go up to to 70 
and went down and there you go we have a story of a drop down so this is just an example just to tell using this crosshair with data box along with the indicator RSI okay um, I will show you more examples as we go on uh, as especially with the indicators for now that's all about crosshair with data box and uh, with relative strength index indicator crosshair without data box what's the use of this one we already have the crosshair with data box and that's a lot better right because you get a pop-up uh, window telling you all the other information of a particular candle now what's the use of this one well you know sometimes when you would like to level uh, a certain uh, elevation of a candle okay against another candle then you might need actually the how do you call this the crosshair without data box and especially when it's so dense and uh, sometimes uh, the chart is so dense and then when you have a big pop-up window popping up there and uh, you don't want that one obstructing your view of looking at the numbers now let's take a look right here your number one it's the second crosshair that's the one without the data box so it is selected because it's highlighted number two we have here a price alignment of the two bottom candles okay as you can see with this particular line we clicked and held the left mouse button and dragged the crosshair on the screen aligning the horizontal line at the bottom of the two candles marked with red circles okay so these two circles here are the one that uh, showing us this two red candles we're trying to align whether this two bottoms what's what's the price alignment of these two bottoms okay number three the crosshair show the price of 21.42 on the right hand section of the chart okay let's have a, a look and the actual example So we would like to know whether this particular candle has almost the same price level. What I'm going to do is click the plain one or crosshair with no data box. I'll just click anywhere here and align the two price points. So what i'm doing i'm going to align the the end point of this candle here let me put a circle and make this one red i fill it up so that you'll be able to see better okay maybe yellow okay better and uh, this one here okay, make it bigger here hit it red line build color with yellow all right now this one is selected cross hair without data box now i will click left click the mouse button hold that one move upward okay as you can see 2143 or 2142 that's actually the price level of which these three red candles met so i'll just put a line right there right now this is the price point of which it is being supported by the bulls 
such that the price is not actually moving downward. This is your support line. Your 21, what was that? 20, 2142 or 2143. So, there you go. That's the use of uh, the plain and simple uh, crosshair without data box. Here, for example, what's the alignment of this one? I see that your support line is actually on 2558 not, not support sorry support line is the one at the bottom I'll create uh, this is your resistance line your resistance line is around 25 2570 20 yeah around 2570 so this is your resistance 2570 So, if the price is going to oscillate between 21.43 and 25.70, there is actually a play for which you'll be able to go and uh, trade within range. So, by, by trading the range and knowing where is the bottom and where is the top, you can actually make money as well. Because that's a big range also. So the lower channel and the upper channel if you take a look at that one 25 and 23 that's uh, uh 21 so that's how much three dollar plus that's a huge gain if you're able to to get that move okay and that's the beauty of the crosshair without data box the pan tool this pan tool the purpose of this one is basically just to move your chart you know left or right and you know to be able to have the visibility of the price action so how it is done you see the hand icon right there so this is our number one the pan chart icon is selected okay it is highlighted right now by just left clicking on it number two screen is clicked with the left mouse button being held and moving the mouse to the right hand side to bring out more historical chart formation three chart moves to the right while continuing to hold the left mouse button okay uh, you might not be able to understand that one right away because uh, it's not the actual one but don't worry we'll see what we have in the actual chart okay. first let me adjust my drawing tool here that way I have more visibility alright so pan chart I'll click on this so I have the hand tool so you see I got here the finger the white the white uh, icon okay if I'm going to left click and move the mouse to the right it gives me historical uh, historical data of the price action backward okay so it tells me what was the price action and then if I move to the left it goes the price action forward okay now the other way that you can do uh, when you have to do the panning is actually to use the blue scroll you see the blue scroll here if if I place the the cursor on the blue scroll and hold on to that one hold the left mouse button and drag the blue scroll all the way to 2014 I have the visibility of the price action 
<coughs> daily price action of MOMO stock. Then I'm going to move to the right. Okay. Still holding the left mouse button. Now on the scroll you have this. Okay. This is actually the left uh, holder and the other one is the right holder there are purpose of that one or there are purposes of that one if I'm going to hold the left mouse button as I hover on that left mouse holder or uh, left holder of the scroll I can stretch now the blue scroll and it gives me the overall picture from 2014 to 2016 okay the daily chart of MOMO then as I move also to the right it zooms in it zooms out if you move to the left now if I'm going to move the cursor right where the right holder is hold the left mouse button and then slowly move also that holder to the left it actually zoom in to the price action of the previous days and if I'm going to move to the right it zooms out it's the opposite of the left handle okay now other than that there is also the scroll of your mouse if I'm going to click the center of the chart and then Okay, roll the ruler of the mouse forward it will zoom in and roll the if I'm going to roll the ruler backward it zooms out okay so there are three things in panning the pan tool which is the hand the blue scroll the handles of the blue scroll and also the scroll uh, button of your mouse and that's all about panning and I guess you can explore more about that one by yourself alright have a good one guys Of all the other tools of uh, free stock chart, um, eraser I guess is uh, <laughs> the simplest one. So let us say you want to remove the white horizontal line on top of the candlestick. Just select the eraser tool. Okay, it's highlighted, so it means it's selected. So once it is selected, all you have to do is just click the horizontal line and it will delete the horizontal line okay let's try to have an actual example okay you see I have this line I want to erase that I'll just click this eraser tool mm, you see I have an icon hovering on top of that line if I left click the mouse it removes that line if I want to remove this text just click that one now let's say for example I am with a crosshair with data box and I want to remove this line how do I do that all I have to do is just left click the button the mouse 
and then it will pop up a window and you have an option of edit set alert and remove I will click remove it deletes so that's the other alternative of the eraser tool simple all right let's move on text trend line and ellipse these are the common tools that you actually will be using most of the time and with just these three tools you'll be able to find the pattern or be able to identify the, the breakouts the breakdown pullbacks and everything like that all right let's go proceed number one all trend lines are drawn by selecting first the trend line tool once it is highlighted you can continue to create lines right now this number one this is not highlighted so it means it's not yet clicked okay a this is a horizontal line showing your resistance line on top of the previous high candle this is actually the point where in price should be breaking out and once it's breaking out it means that there's a big possibility that the price would continue to go upward unless there's a breakdown b your pullback the horizontal line here indicated with a pullback text so we have a breakout from the vcp line here, this is the upper channel the breakout with a big candle and a big volume but then whatever was gained it was digested by, back we have two pullbacks the first pullback was right in the middle of the breakout candle the last pullback was actually at the pace of this uh, breakout candle C is the VCP line which is actually con these are the VCP lines VCP lines connecting the the higher lows and the lower highs okay what is uh, VCP this is actually the contraction of the price moving into the center like it's uh, as soon as the price moves towards the center it's getting smaller and smaller until a breakout comes up I love this pattern because this pattern always shows me a good tendency of the stock to be able to move higher okay once there is a breakout let's say just this is just a note for me once there is a breakout don't chase for that uh, price action just wait for the pullback so wait for the pullback as indicated with the pullback which rests on top of the red candle prior to breakout okay. number two text are activated by clicking on the text icon once it is highlighted you can start typing the text you want in this case we have breakout vcp and pullback number three ellipse is also activated by clicking on the ellipse icon this one here once this is highlighted you can start creating ellipses you want in this case the ellipse on the breakout candle and the ellipse on the pullback candle this green candle and this red hammer candle number four the rest of the other items in the drawing tools i seldom use if I need them I just click on them and use them okay so let's try to see an example how this one is being used okay so supposing we do not have this say I'm going to connect the higher lows and I'm going to connect this lows this is uh, actually this is the higher lows and these are the lower highs okay 
the high that is going lower and lower but the low is getting higher until they meet each other at the center middle of this triangle so we have a triangle formation now if we move to the next day as you can see the VCP is getting acute oops we have a breakdown now this breakdown could mean something but as you can see even though there is a breakdown the volume is small so there is a big possibility that this is just a false breakdown there you go now we have a breakout a huge candle going upward and a huge volume you can enter right at the very top of this candle or the close of this candle then make money right at the early hour of the morning the next day but if you look at this one this candle has a very long wick it means price would actually going to go down and in fact it went down but it went back up why it went back up because it hits now actually this one represents the mid body pullback and it retested if I'm going to create another line here it retested this high this previous high All right so if I'm going to indicate that this is my breakout all I have to do is just put an ellipse right there or I can even use an arrow there we go let's continue oops now this is my second pullback the second pullback putting my lips right there is right almost near the base of the breakout candle you can position with that one actually you won't be able to get that one though because that is actually the low but then the last of the day is right here so it's still actually hitting the mid body of this candle the mid body of this candle is still the best uh, en entry point perfect when the size 27 from 2383 that's a big thing okay and that's about text trend line and ellipse oh I didn't show you the, the, the text it, the text was already there let's say I'm going to delete that one lower highs okay and I'm going to put here resistance I have a resistance but I have what we call a breakout from the previous high right so this I use mostly the horizontal line the trend line the ellipse tool arrow mm, I'll show you the rest you can experiment sign up with the uh, freestockchart.com freestockchart.com is free and that's why it's called freestockchart.com okay so you don't need to put in credit card whatsoever just sign in all right let's proceed 
Now we are going to talk about uh, some interesting tool which is called Fibonacci retracement, regression channel, vertical line, and arrows. Okay, well, what is a Fibonacci? Fibonacci is actually uh, a tool which uses mathematical calculations so that you'll be able to, to know exactly what are the levels of uh, strength of pullback that you're going to have okay now it, it might be very hard to understand right away but uh, anyway I'll give you uh, just an idea of how it is being used the most important thing here is this a and B a pullback of 23.6 and 38.2 have more potential of upward continuation a pullback of 50 and 61.8 have more chances of reversal to downside okay and this is what I usually base now I'm going to show you an example of a chart of which uh, we can use the Fibonacci retracement so I have here AA Alcoa Corporation okay early this morning it actually got up that yellow line basically the, the last uh, that's the the how do you call this the last price of the previous day and then it opens with a gap up continued high up to 26 uh, let's take a look what's the price the high of 26.41 that's a huge move move okay now after that move you have an inverted hammer eventually started to drop down now how do we know what's the strength of the drop down and whether that drop down can actually return back you know if it's going to continue to go up so this is what we do we use this Fibonacci retracement from the very bottom of the last candle from the previous day that's where you are going to put the first point you connect that one to the very top or the highest high of the day okay so let's align that one let's align that one too what I'm going to do is left click edit I'll change the color to yellow so that way it's more visible so right now as you can see it dropped down up to 50 let's take a look yeah 50 and what did I say a pullback of 23.6 and 38.2 have more potential of upward continuation pullback of 50 and 61.8 have more chances of reversal to downside okay let's go back here now if I'm going to pan this chart as you can see it's actually almost touching the level 50 of the Fibonacci and there you go it breaks down the 50 level continued to 61.8 so there is a very strong movement here and sometimes when we have a gap up like this the tendency of the stock is to close that gap so usually it might touch the highest uh, high of the previous day and then comes back but because 
it's really up to 61.8 level right now it seems this stock is just going to continue to go down it tried to go up but it's being halted at 50 level boom drop down drop drop and there you go it touches the highest high of the previous day but continued to go down and even touch the last price of the previous of the previous day So as you can see, using the Fibonacci tool, it helps you identify whether this particular stock is really strong to go and continue upward. But the 23.6 and 38.2 supposed to be right at this level. Okay, I'll use the arrow now. Right at this level, it should have been able to go back and even break the previous high but no it didn't happen that way there are more bears or sellers pushing the stock downward that's the use of the Fibonacci tool okay that's one of the greatest thing when you learn how to use that one. I don't really use that much of this Fibonacci tool because I, I rely mostly of my uh, um, VCP formation pattern. Okay, uh, I will show you that one also to the next video um, once we discuss about the uh, indicators and patterns and whatnot. Okay. For the time being, this is all about Fibonacci all right let's continue and proceed let's delete this now we have another tool which is called regression channel what is this regression channel regression channel i'm going to use the daily chart right now for example I have here Facebook okay, I have too much line here uh, let's go back on our previous uh, example MOMO okay delete all this line you know when you have to when you have to make a channel you will try to connect all the the higher lows right here and then you connect also all the higher highs now there is a tool of which you can easily do that and basically the scope of the channel would just basically touch all those lines so I'll click this regression channel there you go automatically I know that this is the upper channel this is the lower channel I have here higher highs and higher lows okay. what do we have as a trend it is still an upward trend okay if I do like this It's still an upward trend so that's the purpose of the regression channel this is just to be able to identify whether a particular stock is still <coughs> on the right uh, direction where it is heading so currently the stock is still heading in the right direction going upward vertical lines and arrows vertical lines this is very simple all you have to do is just 
click this one now I use this vertical line sometimes just to give me some kind of a um, pivotal point wherein I'll be able to see exactly where is that particular price point that I would like to have so I, I use the vertical lines kind of like a marker for example let's go to the weekly chart okay on the weekly chart each candle is equivalent to one week so right now this candle here I'm going to edit this one and change this one into red this particular candle is the breakout candle against this VCP formation that we have okay if I go back to the daily chart see it tells me exactly where is that line so this is the line where the one week actually the one week is actually from here to there right so this is the end of the week this is the f the first week of breakout I'll use the arrow this is the use of the arrow just to give you a pointer that that's where you break out I can use an ellipse a square whatever you want to do so now I have given you <coughs> I have given you uh, an idea of what are the Fibonacci retracement um, regression channel vertical line and arrow the rest of the other tools here you can experiment them but most of the time I don't use them okay those that I have covered are the ones that I mostly use with regards to trading okay well I guess that concludes the whole thing of part two of the stock, uh, free stock chart drawing tools topic so we've covered a lot of things we've covered how to be able to uh, change or hide our drawing tools or perhaps make sure that the icon of the drawing tools of description or maybe there's no description at all and you just have the icon and uh, we discuss about crosshair with data box crosshair without data box panning and the alternative of panning which is the blue scroll right here at the bottom and the two handles the left and right handles and utilizing also the ruler of your mouse <coughs> so if you use the ruler you can also use that one for panning or zooming in and zooming out okay and then the trend line the horizontal line and uh, we talk about Fibonacci and we talk about regression channel ellipse and arrow text of course and the rest just experiment that and I guess that's all for now guys and uh, later on we are going to discuss about uh, indicators we'll have more fun with that one next time all right have a good one and see you on part three of our freestockchart.com tutorial bye bye